Hello, this is Ian Vogelisang, and this is the video for Demo 1 Fixed DF. We call this fixed because we're going to run for a fixed number of sub-intervals in each test step. If we look at the output folder, we can see that there are a number of test steps. Each test step has a number starting from zero, and then you can see here that I've also given each test step a name. If you give a test step a meaningful name, it helps to make Excel charts because the test name is populated as the tags in a lot of the Excel charts. So we can see there were 11 test steps here. We can see that there's only one roll-up folder called All. We can see there's no subsystem configuration file because we didn't have a command device. If we look inside each step, we can see there's only the All folder that has the all equals all CSV file and it has a configuration thumbnail and look at that configuration thumbnail for example so for each roll-up instance you get a thumbnail of which L devs comprise that roll-up instance okay let's go back back and let's look at the program here we can see the hosts statement I'm using the two aliases for my one test host LUN and I'm using a, an AMS 2100 uh, subsystem. Now we can see actually running an IV test. The create workload statement gives a name to a workload and then every copy of this workload on a different LUN on a different test host has the same name. And we can select which LUNs we want to create this workload on and if you leave it the select blank this means select all available test LUNs. So that selects out of the test LUNs screened by the host's statement. For this test we're going to be running the random steady IO generator. Random steady means issue IOs to random locations but with a steady drumbeat in time. Then the parameters for the IO sequencer are that it's going to be 100% reads and it's going to be IOPS equals max and that we're going to use 32 tags. The idea here by using 32 tags was that with seven LUNs on one AMS port, max tags equals 32 per LUN keeps the total number of tags on the port under 512 with two host aliases. Okay. Actually, I should say also that um, random steady versus random independent there is no difference if you set IOPS equals max because with IOPS equals max it just issues IOs as fast as it can so the timing of each IO is just you drive the next one as soon as the previous one finishes here we can see uh, a, a declaration of an integer variable in the IvyScript programming language which resembles the C or C++ programming language we can see a kind of a for loop here where we're going to repeat this step for values of block size KIB. You can see the range of values we're going to execute this loop for. Then the edit rollup IV engine control statement sends out an IO sequencer parameter update to a particular rollup instance or group of rollup instances. And if you edit roll up all equals all, then whatever parameters you send out will update all workload threads that exist. So here in this edit roll up statement, we're sending out parameters, block size equals, and then we're converting the integer variable to a string. We're appending KIB on the end to show you that IV can recognize uh, the suffixes showing the size of the unit for block size. And then uh, we're going to run a subinterval sequence. So the go statement and the exclamation mark is optional. The go statement uh, assigns a step name like we saw in the in the folder and then oh and this is a string expression in the IV programming language. We can see a string literal here, the plus operator which is concatenation we can see the built-in function string which turns an integer into a string that we're concatenating on and then we're concatenating a suffix uh, KIB on the end and then in terms of operating the test we're only providing two parameters warm-up seconds equals five 
and measure seconds equals 10. This uh, operates with the default subinterval seconds of 5. So this means the test is going to run for three subintervals. Uh, sorry, uh, it's going to run for one warm up subinterval, two measurement subintervals, and then there will always be at least one cooldown subinterval. So that's what the uh, program looks like. So uh, let's close that and uh, load the output and see what's, uh, see what's there. So we're going to use the IV CSV file loader. We're going to scroll down and select the demo one fixed DF folder. And then let's uh, load the program, available test runs, configuration summary. We already saw one of those, so let's not those. RMLive configuration CSV files, there's no point in loading it because there aren't any for a DF subsystem. We'll say um, load measurement summary CSV files. These are the CSV files where you get one summary line per test step summarizing what happened over the measurement subintervals in the test. Uh, we don't have a PID loop here, so there's no point in uh, loading those. Then we're going to show you a, an example from one of the test steps. So let's, uh, for test step zero, there's no RM Live data, but there are by subinterval CSV files. So we'll show you some of those. And then let's import. Okay. Let's start out by looking at the by subinterval test step tab for uh, step zero. You can see it says 1K at KIB. And uh, here we can see that there were four subintervals. There was a warm-up subinterval. Sub there were two measurement subintervals and one cooldown subinterval. We can see the uh, input block size uh, was 1K. We can see it was max tags. We can see that IOPS was set to max, that it was 100% reads that we covered the entire volume, uh, that our test host had 32 cores, each of which was on the average, so here you see about 1.7% busy. We can see um, a set of columns that repeat. Um, you get um, a repeating group like this, where you can see the IOPS, the decimal megabytes per second, the average block size, the Little's Law average Q depth, and this is uh, over um, all the LDEVs. We can see the average service time, the min and max service times. We can see the standard deviation of the service time. And because we were running IOPS equals max, there is no response time. In IV, the service time is the time from which the IO started to the time when the IO finished. And this is distinguished from response time, which is the time from the scheduled time the I.O. was supposed to start until the time the I.O. actually finished. When it is the scheduled time to start an I.O., if there are no available tags, then we'll have to wait before we start the I.O. So response time includes waiting from the time that the application wanted to drive the I.O until the time that the I.O. subsystem, the operating system, had an available tag to drive that I.O. Okay. And then we can see that there's an overall uh, group here, and then there are groups by random, by sequential, um, by read, by write. Um, and then it's further broken down to random read, random write, sequential read, sequential write, you get these breakdowns for everything. And then we get the um, IOPS histogram. So, um, okay, let's look at the IOPS histogram here. Whenever you see one of these, you can just highlight the whole thing. Um, so this goes up to, uh, let's say, uh, we'll only go up to here. And then s highlight the area that you want, then scroll all the way to the left, because sometimes you're way over in the CSV file. And then you can say, insert you can say column and do the, the 3D column like this and then you'll get your um, your histogram 
and uh, you can see and in this histogram on the x-axis is labeled the service times that go into this bucket so you can see that there's several sub ranges within these uh, service times uh, it's intended to cover the range from FMDs to multi-second IOs so some of the buckets are 0 0.1 millisecond wide so there's a bucket you can see for every 0.1 of a millisecond up to 1 millisecond and then from 1 millisecond to 20 milliseconds there's one bucket per millisecond then there's for uh, then up to 100 milliseconds there's one bucket for every 10 milliseconds then there's one bucket for every 100 milliseconds and then further out that I didn't include in this one are the buckets for one second so here's how you that's how you get the um, histograms okay so now let's go and look at the um, all summary file so in the measurement summary CSV files you get one line for each test step which summarizes the measurement subintervals within that subinterval sequence and here we can see that we've given each test step a step name which is meaningful so what we can do for example is highlight the step name and then we can say show me the overall IOPS and show me the megabytes per second and then let's make a chart out of that uh, let's start with a column chart and then let's select megabytes per second and change this into a line and oh let's also make that um, show on the secondary axis and there you have uh, the summary of this uh, test we can see that in terms of IOPS um, for small numbers of blocks for very small blocks the IOPS is about the same but as the blocks get bigger and bigger and bigger then all of a sudden the uh, IOPS goes down and then when you look at the megabytes per second you can see what the reason for that is um, that it's uh, starting off uh, for small blocks at a low megabytes per second but over on the on the right hand side here we can see it's topping off at 800 megabytes per second which is because of course we have an 8 gigabit port that's uh, running at 800 megabytes per second so once the blocks get up to it looks like here 128 kb that's the point at which you can pretty much drive the port at full speed and then when you run at larger block sizes the IOPS goes down but the data transfer rate stays about the same okay that's it uh, for demo one fixed thanks